Hey everyone, I'm Janet Mitchell, a real estate agent here in Boston. Before I share my story, please like and subscribe to hear more about surviving toxic relationships. Trust me, you'll want to hear how this one ends. Three years seemed like a lifetime ago when my world crumbled around me. Now at 32, I've rebuilt my life brick by brick, but the scars still ache sometimes. Sitting in my office, looking at the top agent 2,023 inches plaque on my wall, I remember how far I've come. Finally feeling like myself again after, you know, the divorce, the scandal, the whispers that followed me through every open house for months. My ex-husband Mark couldn't even look me in the eye when those photos circulated. Just packed his bags and left. My phone buzzes. It's my sister Rachel. Hey sis, can you spot me some cash? Just until payday. The hospital's new payment system is delayed. Again? Rachel, that's the third time this month. Please? I promise I'll pay you back. You know I've never let you down. If only I knew how false those words were. I transfer the money anyway. Rachel's been my rock through everything. Helped me through nursing school. Stood by me during the divorce. At least that's what I thought. Later that evening, I'm showing a beachfront property when I run into Derek. Rachel's boyfriend. He seems uncomfortable seeing me. Janet, hey, didn't expect you here. Derek? Small world. How's the ER treating you both? Good, good. Rachel's... She's doing great. He fidgets with his phone, avoiding eye contact. Something feels off, but I brush it aside. Walking into my favorite coffee shop afterward, I see Mark with his new girlfriend. My stomach knots up. Janet, you look well. Save it, Mark. Three years too late for small talk. His girlfriend whispers something and they quickly leave. The barista who knows my story slides me my usual with an extra shot. Some men don't deserve good women, honey. Back home, I scroll through old photos. Rachel and I at her nursing graduation. Me helping her move into her first apartment. Family dinners where she'd always insist on taking group photos with my phone. Strange how she always wanted to use my phone instead of hers. My sister calls again. Janet, you're coming to dinner tomorrow, right? Derek's cooking. Wouldn't miss it. Need me to bring anything? Just yourself. And maybe your checkbook? She laughs, but something in her voice sounds desperate. Rachel, is everything okay? You know you can tell me anything. Everything's perfect, sis. You worry too much. That's why you're my favorite person in the world. I hang up, staring at my reflection in the window. The successful real estate agent staring back has come so far, but something doesn't feel right. If only I knew then what I know now about the people closest to me. But that's the thing about trust. It makes you blind to the daggers aimed at your back. The emergency call came at 3 a.m. Rachel collapsed at work, acute appendicitis. I rushed to Mass General, still in my pajamas under my coat. She's being prepped for surgery now. Derek meets me in the waiting area, looking more nervous than usual. Can I see her? They let me into pre-op where Rachel's already getting anesthesia. I hold her hand as her eyes get heavy. I'm right here, sis. Mmm. Janet. I'm sorry about the pictures. She slurs. My heart stops. What pictures? Your phone. At dinner. Sent them to Mark's friends. Had to keep you close. Needed money. Derek's behind me, and I hear a subtle click. His phone recording. Rachel continues mumbling. Gambling. Needed more. Couldn't let you move away. The job in Chicago. Sabotaged that, too. The surgeon appears, and they wheel her away, leaving me frozen. Derek pulls me aside. There's something you need to know. She has a gambling problem. Massive debts. She's been manipulating everyone. Play that recording again. My hands shake as I listen. Everything clicks. The constant borrowing, the mysterious career setbacks. The divorce that destroyed my life. She accessed your phone that night we all had dinner at your place, Derek continues. Remember? She insisted on taking all those family photos. Three years. Three years I've been helping her, defending her. There's more. She owes dangerous people money. Been stealing from your parents, too. I found letters. Threats from creditors. 
During Rachel's surgery, I drive home and tear through old emails. The Chicago job offer that mysteriously fell through. Rachel had access to my email that day. The lucrative clients who suddenly backed out. All after confiding in Rachel about them. My phone rings. It's mom. Sweetheart, is Rachel okay? Listen, I need to tell you something. Your father and I, we're losing the house. We trusted Rachel with some investments. My stomach churns. I hang up and open my laptop, accessing Rachel's email. She'd used my computer last week and stayed logged in. Hundreds of emails from online casinos, loan sharks, desperate pleas to various family members for money. Derek texts. Surgery went fine. She'll wake up soon. Janet, I'm so sorry. I should have told you sooner. I text back. How long have you known? Six months. She threatened to ruin my career if I told anyone. But I can't keep quiet anymore. I have proof. Recordings, emails, everything. Sitting in my dark kitchen, I scroll through years of calculated betrayal. Every time I nearly escaped her web, she'd pull me back in with another crisis, another need for support. The photos that ended my marriage were just the beginning. My sister, my best friend, had systematically destroyed every chance I had at independence or happiness. All to keep me close, keep me supporting her addiction. Rachel would wake up soon, expecting her loving sister by her side. But the Janet she knew died the moment those anesthesia-induced confessions spilled out. The new Janet had evidence, allies, and most importantly, a plan. The morning Rachel was discharged, I wasn't there. Instead, I was at the bank, removing her from all my accounts. Janet, where are you? I need a ride home. Rachel calls, panic in her voice. Sorry, work emergency, take an Uber. I, I can't. My cards are declined, please? Ask Derek, I'm busy. Next call, my investment advisor. Cancel all automatic transfers to Rachel Mitchell. Within hours, my phone explodes with messages. The rent payment bounced. What's going on? I don't respond. Derek texts me. She's freaking out at work, started making mistakes with prescriptions, administrations noticed. Good, I reply. A week passes. I get an interesting email from the hospital's HR department. An anonymous report about missing prescription drugs from Rachel's ward. I forward it to the board of directors. Did you hear about Rachel? My former co-worker calls. She's being investigated for stealing medications. Derek provided security footage. My parents call next. Janet, Rachel's been calling us hysterically. She says you've abandoned her. Mom, check your retirement account. Silence, then sobbing. Oh God, it's almost empty. Call the police, Mom. I have proof it was Rachel. Mark reaches out through LinkedIn. Janet, I just heard everything. I was wrong about you. Can we talk? You didn't trust me? You didn't even ask for my side. Delete my number. Rachel shows up at my office, mascara running. You're ruining my life. No, you did that yourself. By the way, your creditors might want to know about those plane tickets to Mexico you booked. Her face goes white. How did you... Anesthesia makes people chatty. Derek recorded everything. Get out before I call security. I'm your sister. My sister died the day she stole my photos and destroyed my marriage. More calls flood in. Aunt Sarah discovered Rachel forged checks. Cousin Mike's identity was stolen for gambling sites. The hospital board finds evidence of years of drug theft. Rachel's final text. I'm sorry, I'll do anything. Please help me one last time. I forward it to Derek, who sends it to the hospital board. Within hours, Rachel's nursing license is suspended pending investigation. My phone rings. Unknown number. This is James Carter from Boston PD. We're investigating multiple complaints against Rachel Mitchell. Would you be willing to provide a statement? Officer, I've been gathering evidence for weeks. When can we meet? As I hang up, Mark appears in my office doorway. Janet, please. I was wrong. I miss you. You missed your chance three years ago. Like my sister, you chose to believe the worst of me. Now you can both live with that choice. I turn back to my computer, pulling up the folder labeled Rachel's House of Cards. Time to make sure it all comes crashing down. Six months after Rachel's surgery confession, I'm watching the local news in my expanded office. 
Former nurse Rachel Mitchell pleaded guilty today to multiple charges of prescription drug theft. The defendant faces... I mute it, focusing on my new client. My phone buzzes. Derek's text. It's over. Found out she was still gambling using my identity. I'm pressing charges. Rachel's life implodes spectacularly. The hospital board permanently revokes her license. Three different casinos sue for unpaid debts. Her bankruptcy hearing makes the local papers. Mark's new wife calls me. Did you know he was still married when he started dating me? No, but I'm not surprised. Good luck with the divorce. I hear Rachel's working at a gas station now. Mom says she can barely make minimum payments on her legal fees. She sends letters to my office. Dear Janet, I know I destroyed everything. The gambling consumed me. Please just talk to me. They go straight to shredding. My phone rings. Rachel calling from an unknown number. Please, Janet, I'm drowning in debt. The gas station barely pays enough for food. I've changed. Have you? Or did you just run out of people to manipulate? You're my sister. No. Sisters don't destroy each other. Sisters don't steal photos to ruin marriages. Sisters don't sabotage careers. You're just someone I used to know. Meanwhile, Rachel bounces between minimum wage jobs, drowning in debt and consequences. Mark's divorce makes headlines. Seems his pattern of doubting and betrayal finally caught up with him. He tries reaching out again. Janet, I was wrong. Seeing you succeed while Rachel fell, I should have trusted you. Yes, you should have. Goodbye, Mark. My story goes viral in support groups. The real estate agent who rebuilt from betrayal. They ask how I stayed strong. Success isn't just about making money, I tell them. It's about building something meaningful from the ashes of betrayal. While toxic people self-destruct, we rise, we thrive, and we never look back. Rachel still works at that gas station. Sometimes people tell me they've seen her there, looking aged beyond her years. They ask if I'll ever forgive her. Some bridges aren't meant to be rebuilt, I say. Some people aren't meant to stay in your life. They're meant to teach you who you really are. Did betrayal ever make you stronger? How many of you discovered that the person destroying your life was actually the one closest to you, your sibling, best friend, or spouse? At what point do you think forgiveness becomes self-harm? I chose to cut contact completely, even when Rachel hit rock bottom. Some say family deserves infinite chances, but I believe protecting your peace is more important than maintaining toxic relationships. What would you have done in my place? Would you have exposed everything at once or stayed silent to protect the family's reputation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If my story resonated with you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Every week, we share real stories of survival, strength, and sweet karma. Together, we're building a community where betrayal survivors become warriors. See you in the next video.